Let us bow our heads and let us pray, please. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity that we have to be together today. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are here. Holy Spirit, we want to welcome you in our midst today. Thank you that we can be part of your kingdom, that we can be part of you, that we can be part of a family of love and faith. And we welcome you. Today, Father God, I ask where we are together to say goodbye, that you will be with a family, with a friend, with each and every one of us, Father God, and that you will unfold everyone in your special love. And I pray this in the almighty name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to the honor of God our Father. Amen. Beloved, I welcome you on behalf of the family at the memorial service of Les Griffiths. Ruth and family, friends, it is a privilege to me to convey our condolences and sympathy on behalf of the congregation and the pastorate of the family of love and faith, AFM Church, with the loss of a spouse, a father, a grandfather, a brother, an uncle, and a friend. It is our prayer that Father God carry you through this time of mourning and of sorrow. You know, when I prepare for a funeral service, I cannot just come and stand here and just say a few things or a, a few, you know, nice things and so on. That is not what it's about. You know, I always pray and I ask God for a message for us that stays behind. So what I'm going to share with you today is really what God laid on my to share with us, including myself. I'm not here to preach for Uncle Les because he's not with us anymore. So please know that this is not just a few things that I'm going to say. This can be a message, even if it is for one person here, that can change your future forever. And, you know, I, I want to share with you, and the title of this message today is Dwell in the Shadow of God. Dwell in the Shadow of God. And I'm just going to share two verses as my scripture reading today and that is Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2 and I'm going to read out of the New King James Version and you know the heading says safety of abiding in the presence of God verse 1 he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him I will trust. And our text verse, verse 1, and I'm going to read that out of the Amplified Translation. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I just, before we move on, I just want to make this statement, and we need to understand this, that, you know, people like to quote Psalm 91 for protection and all that kind of stuff. But if we don't understand the first verse, it is not applicable. We cannot use it. The first verse says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So it is something that we must do. You know, it's all about relationship. It is not a formula that we just can take and just quote the scripture and we will be fine. It happens out of a living relationship with God. And God wants to stand in a relationship with us. So it's up to us to make that choice. And then, out of that relationship, out of that covenant, we can proclaim the promises of God in this scripture. So, I want to share with you a true story that I once heard. And uh, it's about Dr. Donald Gray Barnhouse. He was an American pastor. Uh, 
one of America's great preachers. And his wife died from cancer when she was in her 30s, still very young, leaving three children under the age of 12. So Dr. Barnhouse chose to preach on his wife's funeral himself. So what does a father tell his mother's children at a time like that? So on their way to church for the funeral, he was driving with his children when a large truck passed them on the highway, casting a shadow over their car. Dr. Barnhouse turned to his oldest daughter, who was sitting in front, staring out of the window, and he asked, Tell me, sweetheart, would you rather be run over by that truck or by its shadow? So the little girl looked at her father and said, By the shadow, I guess, it can't hurt you. Dr. Barnhouse said quietly to the three children, answered them and said to them, Your mother has not been overrun by death, but by the shadow of death. There's nothing to fear. So family and friends of Leslie Griffiths, I want to make this statement and I want to tell you today that you also has not been overrun by death, but by the shadow of death. And that there's nothing to fear. Why am I saying this? Because Jesus Christ died in His place. He paid the price. It's for free, but it is not cheap. He didn't pay with money, He paid with His life, with His blood. And He died in the place of Uncle Les. So actually, Uncle Les and a born-again believer cannot die. It's impossible for a born-again believer to die. You just step over into the arms of God and you live forever. So that was only the shadow of death. Yes, of course, this earthly body goes back into the earth. But let me tell you, Uncle Les is alive. He's without pain. He's without sorrow. He's running around. He's laughing. He's praising God. Amen. So there's nothing to fear. And the problem is always, and we understand that, for us that stays behind, it's difficult. So our enemy, the devil, wants to fill our hearts with fear today. He certainly tried to scare the psalm writer, the Psalm 91, but the psalmist was fighting fear. The devil loves it when God's children are scared. He wants to scare us away from God and from faith. He wants to separate us from God and He wants us in fear instead of in love. He tries to scare us with death, with pain, with suffering, with sickness and disease. He tries to scare us with divorce, separation and family fights. He tries to scare us with accidents, murder and crime. He tries to scare us with sin, evil and wickedness. Just look around us what's happening in these last days that we are living, not only in South Africa, but all over the world. And if people does not realize it as yet, that we cannot go without God, that we can live our lives the way that we want to, there's a big surprise waiting for them. We are totally dependent on God. There's no other way. You know, you can, you can ask me, but Pastor, why are you so harsh today? Listen, we cannot play church anymore. I was a policeman for 20 years. I'm a pastor now. I didn't grow up in the church. I was in the world. I did a lot of things wrong, but let me tell you, I don't want my old life back. The grace and the love of God is so awesome and so wonderful. And it is time for us not only to be hearers of the word anymore, but to become doers of the word. It is time for us to stand up. Why do you want to fit in when God created you to stand out? <coughs> so, nevertheless, 
No matter how the devil, how hard the devil tries, he cannot succeed in driving God's children away from the Lord. Why is that? Because of the love of God. God is love. When you have God, you have love. When you're looking for love, you're looking actually for God. God is love. So once again, in becoming a doer of the word, it's got nothing to do with formulas. If you do A, B, and C, this will happen. It will not work. Who have you ever heard that people say, yeah, you know, I tried the church, I tried this faith thing, I tried this, I tried tithing and offering this and this, it does not work. It's not a formula. It will not work if you don't do it out of a relationship with God and you live that lifestyle. We read in 1 John 4 verse 18, there is no fear in love. Listen to this. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. The perfect love that we read about here is not our love. It is the God kind of love or the love of God. You know in our modern day languages we've got only one word for love. And that is love because live that. In situ there are two. But in the original Greek and Hebrew there are about I think six or eight different words for love. You know, human love, brotherly love is filial, the Greek word. But the God kind of love, the love of God is agape or agape love. And that means unconditional love. That is God. He is love. And that is the love that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit when we were born again. It is in our hearts. The perfect love of God is within us. But it is up to us to put it into action. It's up to us to become a doer of the word. You know, the devil certainly did not succeed with Uncle Les. Let me tell you that. Was he perfect? No, he was not perfect. He was a human being. He had mistakes. He did things wrong in his life. But praise God, God always looks at the attitude of the heart. God always looks what is going on inside. You know, and, and, and I know, you know, the, the, the road that I traveled with Uncle Les, especially in the last few years, was awesome. You know? So, the devil definitely did not succeed with him. He tried, but could not. You see, Uncle Les was a child of God. He was born again. He did not fear. The love of God was in his heart, the perfect love. He chose the love of God. He chose the word of God. Uncle Les chose peace over panic. And that is the peace that I'm talking about that only God can give to you. He chose peace over panic. Because of the love of God, he was at peace and he trusted God. Choosing God means choosing love because God is love. Because of the love of God inside of him, he was able to choose rest over revenge. Listen to me. He was able to choose rest over revenge. You know, we can walk around the whole day with unforgiveness and what life did to us and what people did to us and this one and that one. And you can be bitter and you can be busy with your own pretty party and you can harden your heart. But in the end of the day, it's not going to work. There's only one way, and that is God, and that is the love of God. But it's a choice. It is a choice. So he made that choice. He chose rest over revenge. Because of the love of God, he was able to focus on God. Yes, a lot of things tried to, to distract him, but every time he made the choice, and he refocused again on God. So Uncle Les is not dead as I said, he's alive, he's without any pain or sickness, he's living the perfect life right now, in the perfect love. And he did not fear death, he knew that he was alive and death had no power over him. He made a decision not to fear because of the love of God in his heart. We read in uh, Psalm 23 verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, it's a choice, I will fear no evil. 
For you, referring to God, for you are with me. Your rod and your stuff, they comfort me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not death, it's a shadow of death. Let me tell you, for a shadow, what do you need for a shadow? To see a shadow. Who can tell me? Light, the sun. Well, let me tell you, when the sun, I'm talking about the son of God, Jesus Christ, the light of this world is with you. That is when it will only be a shadow of death. And that is what Uncle Les experienced as well. As a child of God, you can tell me, when does your eternal life start? Is it the day that you leave this earth? No. It is the day that you make the decision to give your heart to the Lord and you start to serve God. That is when your eternal life starts. So let us look at Psalm 91 verse 1 and 2 again. Let me read it to you again. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. You see, as I said, you must stand in a living relationship with, with God the Father. God's promises are for those who wrap themselves in the Savior and in His blood. Who of you can tell me what is the only way that we can enter into God's presence? You know, when I ask people, they will say praise and worship, serving God, all that kind of stuff. But there's only one way that you can enter into the presence of God, and that is in the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you, there's power in the blood of Jesus. And blood's got a lot to do with covenant. When you look at the devil and the Satanist and all those devil worshippers and so on, you know, blood plays a very important role. You know that. But they cannot create anything. They can generally copycat. But the blood of Jesus Christ flowed for once and forever. And therefore we've got a covenant with our God and He's got a covenant with us. So we can only enter into God's presence in the blood of Jesus. When God looks at you, He looks through the blood and He sees how He created you. Perfect. So, what a way to live in the blood of Jesus as a victim, not as a loser. And it starts with a choice. In fact, that is actually the only way to live, otherwise you just exist. Because Uncle Les loved the Lord and acknowledged His name, He has the joy of life everlasting. You know, I heard the story about uh, the two little birds who had a nest in the, in the bushes, in the back part of the garden. And a little boy found the nest. And it had four speckled eggs in it. So this boy saw the four speckled eggs in the nest. One day, after he had been away some time, he ran into the garden. And he went straight to the nest. And he took a peek at the speckled eggs. Instead of the beautiful eggs, they were only broken, empty shells in the nest. Oh, he said, picking out the pieces. The beautiful eggs are all spoiled and broken. No, my boy, said his mother. They are not spoiled. What was inside has taken wings and flown away. And people so it is with them. The earthly body left behind is only an empty shell. It is actually a witness. While its spirit and the soul has taken wings and flown away to glory into the presence of God. And that is exactly what happened to Uncle Les as well. I want to ask you today. Is the love of God 
in your heart. Eat it. You know, funeral is always a good time to ask this kind of question. Why are you here today? Why are you here? You know, you can, you can tell me, well, I'm here today uh, to say goodbye to Uncle Les. I'm here today uh, because I'm part of the family and the friends. I'm here to please the family. Or I don't really know why I'm here. Did it ever occur to you that you've got an appointment with God today? Nothing happens by chance. There's a, there's a purpose for it in everything. As we face the death of a loved one, we are always asked to look at our own lives and our own readiness to die. And let us look one another in the eye today. And I'm not pointing fingers, I'm talking to myself as well. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you love the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Do you have a living relationship with Him? If the answer is yes, then the promises God gave to His children, including Psalm 91, and to Uncle Lewis, He also gives to you. Just let the love flow every day. Make it a lifestyle. Become a doer of the Word. Not a year or only. You know, we, we, we read in the Bible where Jesus tells the story of the two men. The one built his house on the sand. You remember that story. The other one built his house on the rock. And then the storm, the storm came. And the one who built on the sand, his house was washed away. The one that built on the rock, his house stood. You know that. What is the difference? What happened? What made the difference here? They experienced the same storm. We read there that they both heard the word of God. They heard it. They experienced the same storm. But the man who built his house on the rock, he was a doer of the word. He lived the word every day. The other, the other man just stayed a hearer only. That made the difference. So if your answer today is no, I don't know God, I don't have a relationship with Him. And I'm not talking about knowing about God. All of us know about God. Who of you know who is currently the, 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 the USA or the American president? You can tell me. Biden. How, did you, how do you know that? The news? Yeah. So you know about Joe Biden. But if you go to the White House now and you knock on the door, and he opens the door, what is your name? Liz. Say again? Liz Jr. Liz Jr. Well, Joe Biden says, Liz, my word! Where have you been, man? I missed you. Come in, let's have a cup of tea. Or will he ask you, can I help you? Who are you? Can you see the difference? A lot of people know about God, but there's no personal relationship. <coughs> so if you say today, no, then God's promises in Psalm 91 and the rest of the Bible is not for you. So, if you know about God, it's not for you. The most important thing in life is to know and love the Lord. The worst thing is in life is not to know and love the Lord. So I ask you again today, do you know and love the Lord Jesus Christ as you are sitting here? The good news is, you still has a chance. That's the good news. 
The most important decision that you can make in life is to choose God, to choose love. Uncle Les made that decision. In order to fulfill your God-given purpose on this earth, listen to me today. Listen to me. It's for somebody here. I know that. Listen to me. This makes the difference between life and death, what I'm going to say now. Listen to this statement. In order to fulfill your God-given purpose, listen to this. If you want to fulfill your God-given purpose on earth, you need to realize, you need to take note, you need to know that your ability to be successful in life and I'm talking now on this earth already. Your ability to be successful in life has more to do with your choices than your circumstances. So what choice are you going to make today? And are you going to live and bring that choice into existence to the honor of God? Listen, Uncle Les, if we have a chance to ask him today, you know, I, I'm sure that he would tell us that, no, I don't want to come back. He is where God wants him to be, he's happy. But you see, the truth is that we still need to get where he is. So we've got choices in life to make. We are here today, whatever, whoever you marry, wherever you are, whatever you are doing in life, it's because of the choices that you made. And there are basically three types of decisions in life that you can make. You can make a stupid decision. I made a lot of them. And immediately you know, you think, what did I do? Then you can make a good decision. Everything looks good. And it looks fine until you end up in trouble that is when you figure it out with your head and then you can make a quality or I, I call it a God decision that is the will of God that is when God tells you what to do out of your relationship with him. and a choice like that is based on the will of God led by the Holy Spirit no plan B no turning back in other words no doubt and this is where it gets difficult for me. The fourth point is that we must manage that choice on a daily basis. Every morning when you get up. So what choice are you going to make today? Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Our Heavenly Father. Today, Father God, we just want to come to you just as we are. Father God, we know and we understand that we are actually nothing without you. And today, Father God, we just want to come and stand before you with thankful hearts that we still have the chance to make a difference. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did within and for Uncle Les. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that you died in our place so that we can live and that you leave the choice to us whether we want to accept you as our Lord and Savior or not. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place. While all the eyes are closed, I want to ask you today, if you are not sure, if you want to make sure today, it might, might be your last opportunity to make sure that you are a child of God. And if you are willing today with that to say, I am willing to become a doer of the word, to live the word of God. If that is you today, while all the eyes are closed, and I'm not going to call anybody to the front, I'm just going to pray with you. If that is you today, I want you to put up your hand and I will tell you why. Just put up your hand and lay it down quickly again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The hands are going up. Don't be ashamed. Thank you. 
God says, if you are ashamed before people regarding Him, Jesus said that you will be ashamed before His Father. It's between you and God. It got nothing to do with the one next to you. I'm going to give one last chance because there's something, somebody sitting here, and I know that the Holy Spirit is talking to you today. It might be your last chance. Just put up your hand again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Why did I ask you to put up your hand? Because God says, if you believe in your heart, by putting up your hand, you say, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is my Savior, that He died in my place so that I can live forever. So God says, when you believe in your heart, that is faith, and confess with your mouth, you shall, not maybe, you shall, you will, and you shall be saved. So by putting up your hand, you said, yes, I believe. Now I want all of us, while well, all the eyes are closed, to pray with me this short prayer. We're going to confess with our mouth because faith without works is dead, means nothing. So just pray with me. Just say, Father God, all of us, Father God, I come to you today just as I am. I'm a sinner. And I ask you today to forgive my sin. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus so that I can be the righteousness of, the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, I open my heart. Come in. Come and stay in me. Change me. Help me to become more like you. Thank you, Father God, that I can call you Father now. I've got a relationship with you. Thank you for your love. And I want to declare today that Jesus Christ is King of my life and King of my heart as from today. Amen. Father God, I want to pray for each and every one who really sincerely made this decision today and who made the decision to really follow you, to become a doer of the word. And I want to ask you, Father God, to connect them to the right family, to the right people, to the right church, because the church is not the denomination, it's not the building, it is us. So that we can walk together, Father God, to your honor. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And we pray this in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. People, we're going to sing a song now. We're going to sing This is Amazing Grace by Phil Wickham. Uh, so please let us stand. And uh, Pastor Hannes is going to put the song on the screen and the lyrics will be there. Ruth, you can sit. You can sit, please. Thank you.
the family just asked me to do theology and expressions of thanks. So I'm first going to do the expression of thanks. I'm going to read it as I received it from Anne and from the family. Thank you so much. The ER24 emergency service for their prompt response when we phoned for an ambulance for them to come to the house. Martin's funeral services for all their assistance in collection, my dad, from the house and their sensitivity to our situation. To persons res responsible for cleaning and sanitizing of the church building due to the COVID regulations. To all family and friends who have sent, con sent condolences and to have been praying for us. Thank you to family and friends who have been able to attend the memorial service of my dad. To the Bible school students and the lecturers who gave moving tributes to my dad. And last but not least, to the pastors of the family of love and faith for all their assistance and prayers for their help in making a sad and difficult time easier. This service will also, well, we are busy recording it, and uh, I will send the YouTube link to Anne uh, for those of you who cannot be here as well. The Ology of Leslie Harold Griffith, born 25 March 1939 in Bulawayo, Southern Rhodesia. Zimbabwe was a name of the roots at that time. As a child, lived mainly in northern Rhodesia, in Zambia, met and married Ruth Fenter on 21 October 1961. They had four children together, three boys and a girl. He has three grandsons, two granddaughters and three great granddaughters. He moved to South Africa in 1987. Iskor had kept his job open for six years. He started his relationship with God in the late, late 60s. Only in his latter years did it really become a personal relationship. So you see that makes the difference of building on sand and building on the rock personal relationship. I remember after he went on early retirement, he got a semi-permanent position at Ishkor and he would talk to his work colleagues about God. So he lived his faith every day. What he meant to us. To my mom, he was her everything. In their bedroom, there is a plague which he bought for her for Christmas with the following wording. Any day spent with you is my favorite day. This is all about how he loved my mom. That's very special. Word. To Leslie, his eldest born, he was my hero, my friend. To Anne, he loved us and would do anything he could for us. To Adrian, he was my best friend. To Edwin, he was my everything. To Leslie William, even though in the last decade I spent little time with my family, Granddad was always my God to role model. Staying faithful and loyal to my grand till this passing. Always treating everyone with love and respect. A true master of his own space. I have him to thank for good morals and family values. We will miss him dearly. To Jeanette, he was always honest and sincere. 
and the great support to me and the children in whatever decisions were taken. Ashley, he always had a heart for every problem and situation. He always loved me unconditionally. See, that's the love of God. And no matter how bad the day I had, being sad, being upset, he still came to me and hugged me and said, I still love you. John Luke, when in a bad mood, he always had a joke to cheer me up. And he also had advice for everything. Laura, granddad was my father and granddad and my best friend all rolled into one. He was always there when I needed him. He could always cheer me up and he would tell me I love you and Jesus loves you when I was upset. Donovan, granddad made the world to me. He was and still is my hero and my father. I want to ask Pastor Corinne and Pastor Hannes just to come to the front. I also just want to say something short regarding Uncle Les. You know, we are really going to miss him. He was so special to us. He was a Bible school student as well with Anne. And they were just busy this year with their third year of Bible school, their diploma year. And in church, Anne and Uncle Les, they were always sitting here on my right hand side here in, in the front. And I will really, really miss him. Pastor Green and Pastor Anders, come both of you, please come and stand here with me. Pastor Anders, please. Yeah, uh, what can you say about Uncle Les? Um, you know, he was always the same. You know, he was never uh, different. He was always the same. You could always count on him being full of smiles, full of jokes, and uh, he would always, you know, when, when he came to class, when he came to church, he would always cheer up the room, he would always, you know, make a difference in his own way, and I think, you know, people sometimes underestimated the difference that he makes in people's lives, you know, people sometimes, you know, look at, look at people and they underestimate the difference that they make in people's lives, and him, by just being himself, um, and loving God, he really made a big difference in people's lives, you know, and I think, you know, with his family, with everyone that he left behind, you can truly see the difference that he made, and I think you can always saw that he was always there, he was always there, you know, whenever you needed him, uh, he was always there, and personally, you know, for me, we had so many conversations, he would always come to me and he would always ask questions, he would keep me on my toes, because he would always ask these difficult questions about the Bible, you know, and he always had questions. He, he came and he would come and sit in my office and for hours he would ask question after question after question. And, you know, we would just talk about the Bible. And what I know about Uncle Les is that he really loved God. He loved God and he had a great desire to know him better. You know, and a lot of times he felt maybe he didn't know him as well as he wanted to, but he really loved God. And, um, you know, I saw in the Bible school, I saw the difference that he made. I know, and I want to say that to Anne as well. I know that by him being here, Anne, you made a dream come true. You know, for him to be in Bible school was one of the greatest dreams in his heart. And, and by him being here, it actually fulfilled that dream in his heart. And it meant so much to him. And I also have to say that after Bible school, the questions got less. And uh, as you saw him growing in the Word, and I actually saw him starting to teach other people. So, and that's just the difference that he made. But what I want to say is, is that we're going to really miss him. Um, you know, his place will be forever empty here. But I also want to say, Uncle Les, we know where you are. And uh, we will definitely, until we see you again. Thank you, Pastor Hannes. Pastor Hannes is the, the Dean of the Bible School, Heritage of Faith Bible Institute, Leadership Academy and School of Ministry. Uh, Pastor Green is my wife, for those of you who don't know, 
and I'm going to ask her as well to say something. Thank you, Pastor Kerry. Um, this is a bit difficult, but um, first of all, I just want to share with you guys, and God created us all for a purpose, and clearly, Uncle Les found his purpose. His entire heart was to serve people, not just only to serve God, but to be a servant. And when I looked at him, you could see Jesus in his eyes. And the one thing, the most important, the most powerful thing that we can offer someone else is love. Because God is love. If you offer someone love, you, you offer them God in his fullness. And this is the typical example of what we've seen from Les. And then also relationships in your classrooms. I mean, you can speak to any of the, the, the students and you will see that he had a, a proper relationship with each and every one. And I was thinking the other night, um, I don't think, I want to challenge us to, to take good care of one another. You know what, we take one another for granted. We do not realize the worth of a human being until they are no longer. And today is going to be, from this day onwards, it's going to be a challenge to us to look at the person next to you. And when someone does you wrong, try and look at them through the eyes of Jesus. This is the only way that we're going to make it. But I can promise you, Uncle Les left behind a legacy. Everybody walking around leaves behind a set of footprints. And we all want to follow in the footprints of Jesus. But this man left his footprints. And we will remember him. His classmates will remember him. And to the family, I want to say to you, you were the most important possession that he could ever have on earth. He loved you so much. He would give up everything for you. And from this, this day, it's difficult for us staying behind. But there's a life after this life. And know that He's there waiting on us to, to come home. But from us, from the Bible School, I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity that we as lecturers also had to impart into this man's life this dynamic person. And it was not God says, His word shall never return void. And I want to praise the Lord for what God has done. It is through Him. Because He left behind everything for us. Thank you so much. The, lot of, the most of the classmates made an apology because they are working. But to a fellow blessing, you are here. Thank you so much. I want you to, to come to the front as well, please. Come and stand here with me. Please, both of you, both of you. The reason why I called you to come and stand here with me is because, you know, you are here today. And we know it's, it's not, uh, it is not that the other students, that they don't want to be here, it's just a case that they cannot be here because of work, they told us. But you were his classmates with Anne, and we just want to say thank you for the role that, you know, on behalf of, or to the whole class, the 30th class, we just want to say thank you as well for the role that you played in his life, because you know, I always say it's all about the relationship, and blessing, you know, you sent on the, on the WhatsApp group, you sent actually a tribute, and I have it here. It is part of my sermon because it is so spot on. Do you want to read it to us, please? Here it is. So, what I want to say is that uh, I want to share a message, or she's going to share it herself, with you that Blessing shared on the Bible School WhatsApp group of the third years of 2021 about Uncle Les, and I'm sure that it represents the whole class, and it is fitting, it's a fitting tribute, and a good description of Uncle Les. So, you can read this to us, please. Okay. 
preaching in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Standing before you as a fellow classmate of Uncle Les and a daughter. And I'd like to read you something that I wrote within the three years that I've known him. It was never a dull moment with Uncle Les around. Thank you for teaching us that you can define your life at any moment in time. You told me that as a human being, it is never too late to start over and to push your dreams into greater heights. You are the quintessence that life is a school and you never stop learning until your very last breath. You are such a ball of fun. Your joyful and unav unavoidable laughter will forever be etched in my memory book. Your tight and warm heart will forever be engraved in my heart. Heaven has gained a jovial soul, full of life and zest. Go on and soar with the angels until we reunite again, Uncles. Thank you so much to the two of you. Isn't that awesome? That is what he meant to his classmates. Thank you so much. And you know, actually, yeah, we are, we are saying goodbye to him and it's difficult. But actually, you know, it's different. Every time that I, that I do a funeral of a born again believer, you know, there's life. There's no death, there's life. From the 1st of June up till now, this is now my 12th funeral. It's hectic. But every time with the funeral of somebody that was born again, it's different. So what we're going to do now, we're going to stand and we're going to sing a song that was very dear to Uncle Les. And you know, Ruth said that she heard him singing this song a lot of time around the house. And you'll see this is not a funeral song. It's actually a celebration song. And I want to leave you with this song and the words of this song. And I want you to remember this always when you think of Uncle Les. Thank you, Pastor Anders. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Awesome way to say goodbye to the least. And I actually experienced him reminding us to live life to the full, to become a doer of the world. So I, only thing that I now want to do is, I'm going to read a short short scripture and I'll pray for us. And that will be the end of this service. We came to the end of the procedures here at the church. Please take note that this is a memorial service and that the service ends here at the church. The family will be available outside the church to receive your condolences. And please take note that no refreshments will be served at the church and that all regulations and provisions in terms of the Disaster Management Act 
that is Act 57 of 2002, are applied and adhered to. I want to read to us John 14, verse 1 to 3, out of the Good News Bible. Do not be worried. This is the words of Jesus. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God, believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Father God, that in circumstances like this, that we can turn to you. That we can experience your love in a special way. That we can know that Uncle Les is in perfect love, in your presence, alive. And that we are on our way. That we can know this is the day that the Lord has made. And that we've got a choice to be glad in it. And to live a full life and not just exist. Thank you, Lord. I ask that you will enfold the family and us as friends in your love in a special way. And that Uncle Les' life will inspire us to extra life. And I pray this in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. May God bless you. May you have an awesome day. And may God really comfort you through His Holy Spirit. And let us exercise that decision that we made to really become a doer of the Word and to live our life to the honor of God. Thank you so much.